guys, thank you for tuning in and welcome back once again to yet another episode of Mr. J's Reaction. Man, hey, it's always an honor and pleasure to have you stop by and check out what we have to say on this platform. And uh, today I want us to talk about there is a serious issue going on with leadership in Africa. And uh, I don't want to point at any specific country, but uh, as time unfolds, we begin to understand that some of these speeches by uh, Professor P.L. Olumumba actually hit home and is actually manifested. So, man, thank you for coming through once again, man. If you don't know me, if this is your first time, they call me Mr. J. And uh, we are proudly Marvelin on this platform. We talk about everything Marvelin, from music to entertainment to politics to social issues, man, affecting the continent. And before we do get started, please do not forget to be part of the family, hit that subscribe button, smash that like. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you in the comment section. I want us to talk about uh, something that is happening in Nigeria today, and uh, Nigeria being one of the well, one of the biggest economies in Africa and uh, the giants of Africa. It doesn't matter if you agree or not. And uh, we are starting to understand that uh, there are certain forces in place that are really distorting things to come into fruition in that country. Now, Nigeria, just like every other African country, has uh, a class of what we call the political elite who sabotage a whole lot of things to come to pass. And what do I mean? A whole lot of things to come to pass. Things that would be beneficial to the citizens of these African countries, uh, the political classes across Africa, they intentionally try to sabotage these efforts. Now, let's come back to Nigeria, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so, recently, uh, one of the richest person in, in Africa, man, he goes by the name Aliko Dangote, and uh, this is a business... This is a business wizard. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you try to say he used politics or not, but this man has been doing business and he understands the system. So a couple of months ago, uh, this man announced that he was going to create uh, a refinery, uh, which actually is going to be the, the one of the only single refineries in the world. I mean, it is the top in the world by a single person and uh, immediately he announced that uh, a whole lot of Africans were, were happy because um, rather than exporting crude oil from the continent and in which Nigeria is one of the top producers of that in, in petrol and gas in Africa, crude oil in Africa, uh, we were thinking that hey, rather than exporting crude oil and buying refined uh, stuff from the West. It would, we are going to have somebody in the continent who can actually help with that process. Now, the volume of production per day with this man's refinery was going to, is, is able to handle the need of the Nigerian people. Now, people started getting happy. We were happy. You know, those that are pro-Africa, those that are pan-Africanists were like, hey, man, this is a big deal. This is that. Little did we know that. Um, Immediately that was announced, uh, Western players and political elites in that country started trying to counteract everything this man is working for. They started accusing this guy of, uh, of running a monopoly, of trying to be a monopoly and this and that. And we all saw these things happening. We all knew and we understood that this man's refinery is going to be a big threat to the West and its allies who constantly make this country, this beautiful big country in Africa, to export its crude and buy the refined products. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when you export crude oil, uh, another country refines it and then you buy it back and then as you're exporting, you're exporting employment, you're exporting job opportunities for the locals. But this man took a different approach. He was like, you know what, I'm going to create one here and I will create a, a docking port where you can come in and buy and uh, I'm going to give jobs in Nigeria. Now ladies and gentlemen, um, that fight started 
And uh, if you look behind the scene, you will see that there were puppets playing these political elites in Nigeria to ensure that this man's refinery doesn't come into fruition. However, this man pushed forward. And I like the fact that he always comes on social media and lets the world know exactly what is happening. Now, in an attempt to stop this man, they decided that, you know what? We will not stop him, but we are going to be the single buyer of this man's refined product. Now, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company, the NNPC, uh, decided that we are going to be the only person he can sell to. And uh, knowing very well that this man put a whole lot of money in building that refinery, this man put the top, I mean the best of the best in engineering to make that thing come to life. The NNPC decided that we will be the only person you can sell to. Now, that has sabotaged a whole lot of dreams and aspirations of Nigerians who felt that now that they are going to be refinery in Nigeria, at least the cost will come down. Because normally, if an African country producing oil gets crude oil, they send it abroad. When it comes back, it is already fine and it is expensive. So, in an attempt to recoup that money that they spent, in bringing it buying back to the country, they will be able, being produced at home, is going to be cheap, it's going to be everything, and we can afford it. But that is not what is happening. Now, at this point, uh, I would like to say that uh, politicians and political elites in Africa are like devils. Yes, they are devils and they are demons. What do I mean by that? Why would you see a possibility of helping your masses? Why would you see a citizen come up and build something that will target and that will solve the issues of your citizen? You decide that, no, you will be the only person to buy so that you can be the only person to make the prizes. And now in Nigeria, like some of my fans in Nigeria have been reaching out to me, they are telling me that the price for it is crazy at the pump. It is crazy. I think it's about 850 Naira. Some places sell it for 900. And other places are going to be selling for over 1,000 Naira a liter. Now, I don't know exactly what we did to merit these kleptomaniacs in the name of political elites. I really do not understand why some of these people in Nigeria or the NNPC, they are trying to sabotage that economy but i do know one thing for sure this man came with this refinery to help not only nigerians because if this refinery was open people like countries like Cameroon around nigeria can actually go and refine there to cut the time of sending it to europe and then buying back and stuff like that ladies and gentlemen i want you guys to leave uh, let's have a genuine conversation why is the NNPC in Nigeria not letting Mr. Dangote sell to other people except through them? They accused this man of monopoly. Now they are the one playing monopoly. And when you look at the things that is happening, there is no doubt in my mind that there are some Western players pulling the strings in the background so that this fur can remain and they can benefit of it while Mr. Dangote's dream of liberating and selling for at a cheaper price would be of benefit to the masses. And now so many people are not happy. I want you to leave a comment and let me know. Do you think that it is okay for the NNPC to do what they did? Or do you think that people should start manifesting again and boycotting to ensure that they allowed Mr. Dangote to sell to any other person who in turn can sell at the just price because they are jobs. But the problem is many people cannot afford to buy these at the price that the NNPC is selling. That is my time and I pray that there is some kind of freedom somewhere with this whole mess because it is really, really sad to see that Tinubu came in to to try to change things. But from the moment President Tinubu was elected, it has been crazy for our Nigerian brothers and sisters. Life is unbearable. And that is the same thing that is happening with some of the leaders around Africa. 
that's my time and I want you to chime in, leave a comment. Let's have this conversation. You know? Let's try to push this narrative to a point where I want to understand my Nigerian family. What is really happening? What is really, really happening? Stay blessed. See you on the next. Bless.